Um, hi, it's Groundhog Peggy again. And a while back, I put the um, big Sciote on uh, on my recording studio and put it on YouTube. And I played it in D instead of G, like it's usually played in. And I tuned the fiddle to Cumberland Gap tuning. I think it's called by some people. Anyway, it's A D A D, which is it's um. To, and usually the fiddle's tuned in perfect fifths, which sound like sounds like twinkle, twinkle. That's a perfect fifth, and usually they're it's you know perfect fifth from one string to the other. When you're in AD AD tuning, you just have that one perfect fifth, and you have two octaves of like here comes the bride. That's perfect fourth and then you have another one but in the middle you still have your same two strings and so it's not a whole lot different than standard tuning and a lot of times people do tune up the G to an A if they're gonna be playing in D anyway so it's, the only thing that's really real different is this is a D instead of an E like it usually is you tune it down to a, a D um, anyway, I don't know exactly how I played Big Sciote. I've always tried to play it in G the way, the way it's normally played. And it's always been real hard for me to do. I never could get it right. And so I thought I'd just try it in Cumberland Gap tuning and I kind of liked it and it was easier to play. So I'm going to show in my Groundhog, Peggy Groundhog Music School, I'm going to show how I did it. Uh, it's not, there's no right or wrong way. It's not the right way. It's just what worked for me on that day when I played it on uh, YouTube. And I, I used other instruments, a lot of instruments on my little recording studio that I use. Um, but this, this is something like what I did on the fiddle. anybody's curious and wants to know that how to do how I did it my chair won't won't go where I want it to go it's like it's making me go someplace else here's how okay I'm just gonna roll backwards I guess uh, here's how I did it like that on second string Just do that again, or you could just go, you know, and I usually try to try to rock the bow because when you get into these, these tunings uh, away from standard tuning, you get a lot of bow rocking opportunities. It's, let me see. Just do it like that. Um, and there's this big thing about down bowing where it's good to start phrases with a down bow a lot of times and stuff. And well, there's a lot to be said, I guess, either way. All kinds of people think different things. But if I'm going down when I end the phrase, I try to get back up before I start the next one because it usually does work out better to start most phrases with uh, uh, going downward. So that's one thing that bow rocking is good for besides adding a little bit of rhythm to it. Like 
like that, it also gets you going so you can head back down for the next the next uh, phrase that you're going to do. Start it with the down bow, which is helpful. Um, and to me, it's kind of like it's kind of like double thumbing or drop thumbing on the banjo. You get just a little extra. <laughs> extra beat in there but anyway that's what I did I did that twice and then you get that neat drone with the D because you got that D there it gives you I like the sound of that drone, so it gives you that. Do that again. down on this string if you don't have to do that little thing you can just go but I did it that way and um, I like Nashville shuffle right there you can do that too that B part you can go that's easy to do Better if you play it in tune instead of out of tune. That way you don't have to get back down there. Or you can go. Whoops. That's harder. I can't think of an easy way to get from there to there. Um, but sometimes if, if I'm not, if my hands aren't going good, I do the easy way. <laughs> or... That's the easier way. But anyway, that's basically it.
I can't think of anything else. That's all I know about it. That's what I did. I might do it a different way some other time, but that's what worked for me then. So, bye-bye.